everyone, I'm Mr. Andrew from Brentwood Library, and welcome to another fun, fantastic, fabulous, and creative Maker Monday. We're so excited to be able to share this with you again, and we are excited to have you work with us here for this uh, new project. And uh, this month, we're actually going to try something a little bit different. You can probably tell what I'm thinking by what's on the, uh, on the screen up here behind me. This month, we're going to make bread in a bag. Now, I know what you're thinking. It sounds pretty tough, right? Well, we have a pretty easy recipe that you'll be able to work on at home with an adult, and uh, it should be a lot of fun, and you'll learn a lot about bread in the, in the process, I think. So, uh, just to get your minds working a little bit, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions to consider as we hop into our bread-making process. Now, I would, I, I'd like to know, what do you know about bread? What would you like to learn about bread? What ingredients are in bread? How do you make it? What do you think makes bread rise? And how does yeast work in bread? Now you can take a little time to consider that if you want. Pause the video if you like, and uh, we can uh, come back and we'll take a look at uh, what we're going to need going forward. Take a look. So for this particular bread recipe, you're going to need a few ingredients, and those ingredients are three cups of plain flour divided, three tablespoons of granulated sugar, a 0.25 ounce packet of rapid rise yeast, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and one cup of warm water, and finally, three tablespoons of olive oil. So they're pretty simple ingredients that'll come together to make a pretty tasty treat in the end here. So remember how we had those questions earlier that I asked you to consider when you were starting into the whole bread making process? Now, one of those questions was about how does yeast work in bread making? Well, yeast is very interesting. It's probably the most interesting ingredient that you're gonna be working with in the bread here because yeast is actually a living thing. It's a single-celled fungus, which I know what you're thinking. It's ew, right? But yeast is actually very important in helping us to make our bread rise. Now, with the type of yeast that we're working with here, there are several kinds, but we're using what's called an active dry yeast. And this kind of yeast is uh, dormant. It's asleep until you wake it up by giving it warm water and a food source. In this case, we're using our sugar that's in our recipe. So that is going to wake up the yeast in there and make it do its thing. The sugar will feed the yeast and create a process called fermentation. And if you start to notice bubbles forming in your bread mix, that means that's carbon dioxide gas that's given off by the yeast as it's eating the sugar. And these bubbles are also what causes the dough to rise when the air pockets are trapped in the strands of the dough. So when you cook the bread, the yeast will then uh, die off in the oven. So don't worry that you're eating fungus with your bread. You'll be relieved to know that you're eating just a side order of fungus and not the whole thing with your bread. It's really very cool how that happens. So any bread that you eat, there's been yeast in there that's made it rise and become all fluffy. And I think that's really cool that we've been able to figure out a way to use those little creatures to help us to uh, make some of our favorite foods. Don't you think so? Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay from Brentwood Library. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Maker Monday. And as you already know, today we are making bread in a bag, which is very exciting. So without further ado, let's get making. All right, so you're gonna start, you're gonna need a big bowl and a resealable Ziploc bag. So if you need to pause the, vi the video and go grab those things, you can do that now. You're gonna start off by opening your bag up inside of your big bowl, just like that. And you are going to get your flour and you're gonna scoop one cup of flour into your bag. Nice, even scoop. Open off the top there. You're gonna scoop that right into your bag. 
Okay. Then we are going to put three tablespoons of sugar in with your flour. Let's get three tablespoons. Nice even scoops. One. Two. Three. Perfect. All right, then we're going to get our 0.25 ounce packet of rapid rise yeast. Mr. Andrew should have taught you all about yeast and how it works. Very cool stuff. Let's put our yeast in with our flour and our sugar. All right, and one cup of warm water. So I'm gonna pause the video and go get my one cup of warm water and you can do the same thing. Okay, so I put my one cup of warm water in the bag with my flour and my sugar and my yeast. And now I'm gonna pull the bag out of my bowl and I'm going to squeeze all the air out that I can and then seal it up. And then this is the really fun part. We are going to mix it all up with our hands. Mix it really good. Mix, mix, mix. Mixing it up with your hands. Feels nice and squishy. All right, mix it up really good. And then after you mix it up really good, we are going to let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, welcome back. Now that we've waited our 10 to 15 minutes, we are going to open our bag back up and we're gonna add another cup of flour. and one and a half teaspoons of salt. There's one. And a half. Okay. And we're also gonna add three tablespoons of olive oil. So we have one, two, and three. All right. Okay, we are gonna seal it back up and mix it. Mix it again. Try and get as much air out of there as you can when you seal it up. Make sure it's nice and tight so you don't squeeze your ingredients everywhere when you're mixing. Give it a nice, vigorous mix. This is my most favorite part about making this bread recipe is the mixing in the bag. I kind of feel it getting a little bit thicker. Oops, I didn't seal mine tight enough. That's all right. Seal it back up. See what I mean? Big mess. All right, I fixed my bag. So once you mix it this time, you are gonna open it back up and you're gonna add one more cup of flour. This is your last cup. You'll notice this time it's getting a lot harder to mix. It's because you're mixing in the flour. Okay, make sure it's sealed nice and tight. As tight as you can. And then you'll give it one good mix. One last good mix. Try and get the flour mixed in. It's can kind of get clumpy in there, so you want to kind of try and break it up, get it mixed in with the rest. 
And this way, using it in the bag, mixing it in the bag is nice because your hands aren't getting all yucky. But if you prefer not to use it in the bag, mix it in the bag, that would be okay too. My bag keeps coming up. I hope you're having better luck. Okay, once we've mixed for the third time, your dough should be feeling pretty firm in your bag. Um, so now it's time for kneading. Um, I'm gonna do mine right on my table here. I'm just gonna throw some flour down on my table so the dough doesn't stick. You can use um, parchment paper. You can lay down parchment paper first and then put flour on top if you'd rather, but I'm gonna do it right on my table here. And you're gonna take your dough out of your bag of it as you can get out. I'll turn it inside out here. That might be helpful. There we go. Get as much of it off of the bag as you can. All right, and then you're just gonna you're just gonna knead. Try and work out all the air pockets. And it will be a little bit sticky at first, but as you keep kneading, that stickiness should go away. So you're gonna knead for 10 minutes, okay? Whew. 10 minutes of kneading is actually pretty tough, isn't it? But I know you did a great job. And I don't know about you, but I found the kneading to be pretty relaxing mindless and helps you calm your thoughts so if you're ever having a bad day this might be a good activity to try at home all right once you did your 10 minutes of kneading you're going to get a warm damp towel and you're going to lay it over your dough and you're going to let it rest for 30 minutes okay 30 minutes all right after your 30 minutes are up you're going to pull your towel off and you should notice that your bread has gotten bigger. That's the yeast doing its job. And then you're gonna take your loaf and you're gonna put it in a greased loaf pan. Get it in there, nice. All right, and uh, you're almost done. Now all you're gonna do is put it in the oven for 25 minutes at 375 degrees. And then when it comes out, you should have a beautiful loaf of bread. Happy baking. Thanks for joining us today.